Yo, 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 everybody, Generic B here, and welcome back to another episode of Generic B's B Academy. <laughs> uh, so in the last episode, we talked about how to take uh, these little apiary guys and automate them for production. And I told you guys to set that up with all your industrious and your imperial bees. So hopefully you've got yourself a chest full of some pollen and some royal jelly. And you've probably picked up some beeswax along the way from centrifuging out all of those juicy, juicy combs that you get. Right? So now we're going to do something with it. So here's the apiary. Here's what we've been rocking. It's good. Don't get me wrong. You know, you can put in a bee, and you can put in some frames and things, and you can even automate it. But it's got its limitations. Some bees, uh, you know, unless you uh, unless you use serums and inoculate them uh, in specific ways, which we'll talk about next episode. Uh, you know, some bees don't like it uh, when it's when it's raining, or they can't work at night. Um, you know, sometimes you they act really slow, and so you want to put frames in to speed them up, but you constantly have to keep feeding it frames manually because there's no way to automatically put those frames in. And sometimes you just, as you are breeding bees, you end up with tons and tons of hybrids, and you just sit to your you you sit there and say to yourself, "Why, why you terrible?" Be gods, why must you be so cruel to me to give me hybrids when you know I really want this really cool mutated pure bee? Don't worry, I've been there too. That is why we're going to use the alveary. That's right, this is the apiary's big brother. And boy, is it big. Uh, and then, you know, you can right click it. There's where your bees go. And here's where all the output. You'll notice there is no spot for frames. Ooh, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let's talk about how you make these suckers. What you'll need is you'll need to make an alveary block. More specifically, you need 27 of them per, per alveary. And here's how you make them. You'll need two, uh, two carpenters. One will need to be filled with seed oil. Uh, and you will take... Uh, any type of log, you put them in a little uh, chest formation, and then you will get these things called impregnated casings. And of course, you need uh, Michael Jackson's MJ Minecraft Jewel Power to power these. I don't. It's just for demonstrations, right? So you'll need to make impregnated casings, and you'll also need to make these things. These are called uh, scented planks, and that is made by, uh, you need to fill your carpenter up with honey, you need one royal jelly, a haul, which comes from the imperial bees. Three planks, can be pretty much any type of wood. Two beeswax, and one pollen, which comes from the industrious bees. That's why we've been uh, telling you guys to make these. And then, all you gotta do to make your alveary block is you take your scented, pan uh, scented paneling and your impregnated casing, you make a nice little ring, a little chest formation of the paneling, put the casing in the middle, and Bob's your uncle, right? Take it right out, like that. Like I said, you need 27 of them, so we're gonna take these guys out, and you also need nine slabs, and they do have to be wood slabs, and what you do is you just simply go in a nice little three by three, three by three by three. It's gotta be three wide, three deep, three tall, Oh, hello. And then you're going to kick it off with a nice little roof full of half slabs. It may take a second or two in order for it to register, but... Bonk, there it is. And you've got your alveary. So this is great. But you may be asking yourself, well, what's the difference? Because, man, that takes a lot of resources. Yes, it does. By itself, the only real advantage that an alveary may have over an apiary is that the bees tend to, uh, tend to produce a lot better just by nature in the alveary. Um, I guess you could say they feel more at home. This is more of a natural environment. Uh, let's get us a nice daytime. 
Um, so it's almost like they have some built-in frames. I don't know exactly, you know, how much faster it works than a, than an apiary, but that's like the on its own. That's one of the advantages. But you could sit there and you go, well, heck, man, like look at how much bigger this is. That's 27 blocks. You could put 27 alviaries or apiaries. Yeah, but this actually works out being a heck of a lot better. Trust me. Um, plus, we can. We can pimp our ride. Yo, dog. I'm here to pimp your alviary. And we can do that with some of this stuff. So the first one is an alviary lighting block. And that is made with glowstone dust, one of the alviary blocks, and then a golden electron tube, which can be made in a thermionic fabricator. I won't show you how to make it. It's not, not necessarily part of this, uh, this tutorial. Uh, but you can look up in your little NEI and figure it out. Um, and all you got to do is you take this little guy bloop, and you can replace any of the alveary blocks on the bottom two rows uh, except for the center, right? So you can, we'll just take, bloop, take this guy out. Notice the thing gets removed, but if we put it back, bonk, and now it's gone. This alveary lighting block makes it to where whatever bee you put in is acts like a nocturnal bee. So regardless, day or night, this bee is now gonna work. And that's really beneficial uh, when you're doing mutations, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, um, because you may get a bee, you know, let's say that your very next bee you get is a, I don't know, uh, emerald bee, but that emerald bee is not nocturnal. And, you know, you've got to mutate it with a lapis bee to get something. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but that bee's not nocturnal. You could sit there and you could inoculate it with a, with a nocturnal serum. Or you could try to mutate it with another bee that does have it. Oh, it's such a pain. Just build one of these things. Stick it in there. Bob's your uncle. The other one is an alveary rain shield. And as you can guess, it allows the bee to work during the rain. And it's really easy to make. Throw some bricks up there, a little alveary block, two golden electron tubes. You get one of those. And again, all you got to do is you just pick any block down on the bottom two and wait for it, wait for it, boonk. Okay. And so now the bee will run if it's raining or not. Easy. And you only need one of one of those in an alveary in order for it to work. Like having more doesn't help you at all. Then you got these frame housings. Frame housings are made with three iron ingots, alveary block, and three golden electron tubes. Take one of those guys. And these, I'll stick it right long. Chow. Wait for it to do its little thing. Boink. And what this is, is this just a place to put a frame and so you can put uh, you know any type of proven frame impregnated frame whatever you want and the benefit of this over the ones in the apiary is you can actually automate these you can put build craft tubes up to it uh, build craft pipes you can put uh, pneumatic tubes through red, red power actually red power works really really well with this and we will talk about that in a future episode um, but you can theoretically Fill the entire bottom two rings with these suckers. Uh, my buddy Hypnotize did some research, and he found out, I believe, that really six is the most. Uh, and after six, it kind of, you kind of have diminishing returns on it. Uh, I put three along the bottom. Works pretty well. But here's the big one. Here is why you want to make an alveary, period. No question about it. It's the best thing ever. It's this mutator block. And it is two gold ingots, one alveary block, and two diamantine electron tubes. Um, you make those again in a, uh, in a mm, what's that thing called? Thermionic fabricator. This thing is a gorgeous, a gorgeous, a gorgeous thing. We're going to take it. I'm just going to tear out these three. Now, three is typically overkill, but for me, I like to hit a fly with a sledgehammer sometimes, and that's why I do three of these suckers. What this is, is kind of like really customizable soul frames. If you remember in an earlier episode, we used soul frames in the apiary 
to increase the mutation chance of, uh, of the bees. Now, this little guy, uh, where did I put it? Oh, there he is. Yeah, there's the soul frame, right? Which uses soul sand. But here, we've got all these different types. Soul sand, it increases the mutation chance by 1.5. Was that me, Badoomp? Why would I have a Badoomp? Oh, Facebook. <laughs> Don't Facebook me, please. Um, Actually, no. Just, he's going to beat me, isn't he? Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Uh, soul sand, 1.5% mutation. So if something was a 5% chance of mutating, now it's going to be like 7.5%. So that's all well and good. Ender pearls. You can throw an ender pearl in there, and it doubles the chance of mutation. Awesome. Eye of enders. Hey, everybody's got eye of enders, right? It's just a little uh, ender pearl with a little bit of blaze powder. Four times the mutation. Fantastic. But here's my favorite. You could sit there and go nether star 50 times. That's overkill. Who has time for that? Not me. Unless you've got yourself a giant wither killing machine, which some people do. I do uranium, baby. 10 times mutation. You cannot beat it with a stick. All you gotta do, grab yourself some uranium. What is uranium? Uranium ore? Interesting. Go in each one. Stick that in there. Like a so, like a so. And then when you put your two bees in there to mutate, it is almost guaranteed mutation. Even if it was a 2% chance of mutating that sucker, that's 10 times. So that becomes 20 and another 20 and another 20 because these guys stack. This is the way to go. It has been very, very few times where three uranium has not just completely dominated it and given me not only a, a pure mutation for the princess, but a pure mutation for all of the drones. This will dramatically increase the speed at which you mutate your bees. This is going to be your fast track to getting all of those advanced bees that you've been wanting. So you know how I was saying back in the day, can I fly? I was like, I know you're going to want to start mixing bees like a madman, but don't do anything until you get to these two bees. This is why. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Next episode, we are going to talk about using the advanced machines so you can keep the mutations that you found without worrying about losing the princesses along the way. Because there is a high chance of that, uh, losing your, you know, your purebreds, if you keep mutating over and over and over again with all of these different, uh, different levels. This, using the advanced machines in the next episode will help you really, really, really speed things up. Okie dokie. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Brush your hair. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.